Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with a deck tech today. Uh, so before we get started with the deck tech today, I'm just going to remind you, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. really helps out the channel a lot. Uh, also, like the video, share it, whatever, normal stuff. You know, all the other YouTubers tell you that, so I'm going to tell you the same thing. So we're going to jump right into it today. Uh, so we have a Gruel Dinos deck tech. Today we're going to be going over a Pioneer version and a Modern version of of this deck so a little bit of backstory for this uh deck so i've been playing gruel dinos for at least i want to say it was 2019 this is when uh m20 came out it was with uh like marauding raptor riding regisaur shifting ceratops was when i really started playing i played it a little bit before uh but the deck really didn't take off until around marauding raptor was printed um so i've been playing the deck for quite some time now actually and uh Pretty much the story that I'm going to be telling today. It's, it's not a huge story, but anyways. So uh, this last weekend, we had a modern event uh, at my local game store. And uh, there was around, I think it was, seven, it was 17, maybe? A little under 20, anyways. So uh, overall, I ended up going pretty well. I ended up making the, the top cut. Ended up getting to top eight. Uh, ended up losing to Trime. But the funny thing is, is so with the deck, my camera's a little not straight, let me fix that, sorry. So the funny thing is, with the deck, I played my Pioneer version in the modern tournament. I decided, I woke up that morning, is like, you know what, I really want to play my Pioneer deck. So I played Pioneer Dinos, ended up going all the way, went 3-0 uh, on in the Swiss, and then ended up losing uh, in the first round of top eight to Tron. Um, so today we're going to go over uh, the deck I played at the tournament, and then I'm also going to give you a modern version of the deck. Um, we might end up playing it sometime soon on Magic Online, I'm not quite sure yet with scheduling yet, um, but I'm going to show you if I was taking it serious into modern, this is how I would play the deck. So we're going to hop right into it here, you can see my really weird trippy interface for a second here. There we go, alright. So, this is the Pioneer version of the deck. Um, it, the sideboard is a little different. I didn't feel like changing it just because this is what I would play in Pioneer. I switched the sideboard uh, based on Modern. Uh, so anyways, I know you guys have seen the list a lot if you've watched my previous videos, but we're going to go over it. So, Gruel Dinos for Pioneer. So, obviously, you know, you need to pump out your dinos. So, you got two Elvish Mystics and four Lanner Elves uh, as your kind of main mana producers for turn one. And then we have four Marauding Raptor, which... I know if you guys have read my articles or seen my other videos, uh, this is the best card in the deck. Uh, you'd be shocked, but it is the best card. It's a mana dork that gets huge, uh, super synergy. Well, a lot of synergy with her deck. Overall, awesome card. Next, we got two Rampaging Frost. I'm pretty self-explanatory. It's amazing when we're ahead. It stops like the weird life gain strategies. Occasionally, you do run into them. It's really, really good against opposing creature decks. Uh, just overall, great card. Great card. We got four Ripjaw Raptor, uh, one of the better dinos in the deck. Combos really well with Marauding Raptor, uh, just because it takes damage when it just draws a card. You know, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Great against other aggro decks. Then we've got three Shifting Ceratops, which pretty self-explanatory. Uh, great against blue. It's another four-drop dinosaur. Um, you know, having the reach is pretty good, especially when it's pro blue, because a lot of the there's a lot of good decks in the modern format that are blue right now. So especially this is going to get better with Counterspell coming into the format. Then we got four Registrar Alpha. So with Registrar Alpha, I mean, pretty self-explanatory card. I mean, the card is incredibly strong, hits really, really hard. Uh, it's really all I can say about it. I mean, the card's incredible. Uh, we've got one Carnage Tyrant. Uh, just, I wanted one six drop. Uh, honestly, this card has saved me quite a bit. Um, just in the, se in the sense that, you know, sometimes late game, you get a lot of mana, you're in top deck mode. Hitting a Carnage Shire is incredible. And then we got two Galts of Primal Hunger. Pretty self-explanatory. It's a Dinosaur, 12th Trample. You know, playing on turn four with haste is always really nice. So with the other spells, we have two Domri Anarcha Bolas. Pretty good. I mean, that has static effect. Pumping your creature is really good, especially with Galta. Uh, being able to make mana, obviously, is very helpful. Especially when you play this, like, turn two, turn three. Uh, and then also making your creature spells can't be countered. It's awesome. And then the fight on it gives us a little bit more reach with removal. Especially good with, like, Ripjaw Raptor. So with the regular spells, four communes. It's ancient strings for dinos. That's really all I can say about it, to be honest with you. And then we've got four Reckless Rage. Uh, which is really synergistic with Ripjaw Raptor, uh, especially dealing four to a creature, which a lot of decks don't expect that uh, for, for for one mana, and then doing two to your own is really not too much of a drawback. 
Uh, other spells we have are two Ember Cleave. So Ember Cleave, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Ember Cleave, just an incredible card. Um, a lot of times with your opponents just chump blocking and then slap an Ember Cleave, game can be lights out easy. So we got 22 lands. We've got the one Castle Garen Break. I play this just because uh, we're not as devotion heavy as you'd think. Sometimes being able to pump out a Galta or a Carnage Tyrant a turn early is just incredible. Uh, so that's why we play the one of. We've got seven forests, four mountains, two Ribbon Crags, two Stomping Ground, and four, well, four, yeah, four Stomping Ground, four Timber Crown Pathway. I was playing uh, four Ribbon Crag, two Game Trail, but with Timber Crown Pathway, it's incredible. We just play four of. So the sideboard, we've got two Tormod's Crypt, two Abrades, two Damping Spheres, uh, two Fry, two Scavenging Ooze, two Anger of the Gods, two Vivian Monster Advocate, and one Carnage Tyrant. So I guess I'll just give the quick rundown. Good against Graveyard Hate. Uh, really, with this, it's good against uh, the Affinity decks, and then it's also really good with uh, just extra removal. Uh, obviously, this is really good against the Lotus Breach combo decks. Uh, good against Blue Eye Control Spirits, a lot of different decks. Graveyard Hate, Midrange, decks that go wide, Control, and then Control. So, the only difference with the sideboard for the event I played in uh, this last weekend was instead of Tormat's Crypt, I played uh, two Alpine Moons to help against like Tron and Valakut. Uh, I did cut one, I cut on a braid for, oh man, a Pithing Needle. Yep, is a Pithing Needle. And then instead of Damping Sphere... I should have wrote this down. What the heck did I play? Oh, um, uh, two uh, Graft Digger's Cage. That's what it was, two Graft Digger's Cage. Uh, so I wanted to switch that up a little bit. Uh, but other than that, this was the same list I played. Um, so just a quick uh, rundown with matches. The first round I played against Abzan, I won 2-1. Uh, the second game I won was against Tron. I won 2-0 against Tron. In the third round, I played against Blue Eye Control, and I won 2-1, and then I drew the last round, and then the first round of the top eight, I played against Tron, the same opponent from before, and they got me 2-1. Um, so, maybe another day I'll actually go into more of the stories with it, um, probably on another video. It actually might even be the next Cranes Chronicles, to be honest with you. Um, but anyways, this is the list right here for Pioneer. We also have a modern version, so I have not tested the modern version yet. Um, this is kind of just a generic, probably what I would play to it. Uh, so, honestly, you're not going to see a lot of differences. You got the four dorks. We are playing four noble hierarchs. Um, we're not playing Birds of Paradise because of Galtamath. Um, with this, we can actually attack and possibly play it on the second main phase. Um, so that's why we're playing four hierarchs. And we're playing two Elvish Mystics, not two Birds of Paradise. Four Marauding Raptor, two Frostodon. So I'm not 100% sure. 100% sure with the Chameleon Colossus. Um, I know it's obviously really good against like Shadow and stuff like that. Uh, so that's why we're playing the Chameleon Colossus. Again, it might not be the right way to go. It's just kind of this is what I would possibly play. Um, four Ripjaw, four Shifting Ceratops, three Register Alphas, one Card Shark, two Galta. That's the same. We cut down to one Domri uh, Commune. So this is one of the biggest things I'm, I'm still on the fence about uh, with Reckless Surge and Lightning Bolt. So obviously Lightning Bolt does go to the face. Um, but a lot of times with Reckless Rage, this is just half the time it's one mana, four damage draw card, which is really hard to pass up in a deck like this. We might just go to four Reckless Rage or four Lightning Bolt. I would have to test this for sure, um, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And one of the biggest differences here is instead of Ember Cleave, I would possibly play Collision to Colossus. And the reason being, uh, killing Scourge of the Skyclaves, Manus Riders, Spell Quellers, those are all like really, really important things to do in the modern metagame currently. And on the other side of it, you can also give a creature plus four, plus two, and trample, uh, which it does a lot of the same things as Embercleave a lot of the time. Um, so again, the the land base is pretty similar too. I um, mean, except we have Cavern of Souls and Fetches. Other than that, and the one castle like Wolf Run. Sideboard is really similar. We just got the uh, Relic of Progenitus for Graveyard Hate. Veil of Summer, because it's not banned in Pioneer. And then we got the Blood Moon, obviously, because we could definitely play Blood Moon in this deck. Possibly in the main board, we'd even want to. Uh, that'd have to be something I'd test out. And then the two Chandra Torch of Defiance, just because I, pr I would probably prefer Chandra as opposed to Vivian uh, in Modern. Um... But in regards, though, I mean, this is a pretty similar list, and which is part of the reason why the deck did a lot better than I expected, because the core is the exact same, 
between modern and pioneer it the core of the deck does the exact same thing you play the exact same spells for the most part um so does this potentially mean the deck is somewhat playable in modern possibly possibly um uh, let me switch back to the modern deck here i mean you could make the argument um, with some decks, it's really, really good against, um, like, for instance, I would say it has winning matchups against decks like, uh, uh, like humans, uh, blue eye control. Um, uh, I think some mid range strategies, it's pretty good against, um, like I would say the bad matchups would be like the stereotypical, um, like, you know, like storm, which isn't even that big in the modern metagame, uh, blitz. I don't, I, I, I'm on the fence with blitz, to be honest with you. I think it could be good, but I think it's probably just not in our favor. Um, but like Tron, like Tron is a matchup I really didn't want to do. Amulet is very hit or miss. I think it's with, in regards to Amulet, I think one deck is going to make the other deck look really, really bad is that kind of thing, depending on whoever wins. Um, but I think a deck like this could potentially, you know, do something in the modern metagame. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be a tier 1, 1 1.5 deck ever in its existence. Um, well, unless Modern Horizons 2 comes out with something amazing. Um, but I think a deck like this could actually be somewhere in the metagame. Uh, I mean, the deck is really resilient. It's got really good countermeasures against a lot of blue decks. You know, you got your Shifting Ceratops here. You got the Domri, Carnage Tyrant. Um, against like decks like Mono Red, sometimes you might be able to just plow through them, you know? I mean, if they can't burn you out quick enough, you probably just win the game. Um, you know, especially, I mean, with a lot of prowess, you probably would want actually Dragon's Claw somewhere, somewhere here in the sideboard. Um, but I think a deck like this has actually a decent chance of competing, um, especially since with, uh, the local I played with, it was, I mean, it was a pretty solid tournament overall i mean there was like a lot of different diverse decks i mean there was there was blue control uh there was amulet there was scape shift uh there was uh, ca uh not counters company but yeah basically counters company i mean grix's death shadow abzan model red i mean like there were so many different styles of decks there um but uh yeah overall this is kind of our deck list here that we'd play for modern and then this is our pioneer list right here um so obviously if you're interested in checking out both decks i will leave them in the description so you can check them out i also do have a historic list i can also put in the description uh, for those who primarily play arena and you maybe want to try it on arena um but yeah this is basically the list here uh this is a for sure tested pioneer list this is kind of like a rough sketch of what i would actually play in the metagame um, cause again, I'm not sure if this is what I would, how I would play it. Um, a couple things I'm not entirely sure on. Uh, but honestly, minus the Noble Hierarchs in the Caverns, this is actually a pretty cheap deck. I mean, Wood of Foils, you could probably get away with just playing like four Wind Subtees if you really wanted to. Um, but overall for a consistent deck, like this is probably what I would play, uh, for Modern. But anyways, I'd like to thank, like thank you for joining me, uh, for this deck tech. Um, if you'd like to see more like this, let me know in the comments. You know, I love doing deck techs and stuff like that. I think it's also really fun, um, especially with brewing and stuff like that. A lot of my decks that I do deck techs, I would like to actually play with. Um, I know I've done a couple of historic dinos videos, but I would like to do some pioneer and possibly modern ones, depending on how the metagame shapes up after Modern Horizons 2. Um, but anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.